Okay, this is just a quick overview of the extended experimental investigation for second years. So this is our CBA1. So this is CBA1 for second years. And we're starting it after the midterm, so the 24th of Feb. Okay, and that will run right through until the second week of March. Okay, so that's three weeks in total for our CBA one. So just to remind ourselves, it's an experiment that you're going to be able to carry out in the classroom. Okay, so where we've leaned towards over the last couple of years is experiments involving forces and water, energy conservation. That's not to say that you can't do the other topics, but they haven't been so successful, the plant growth, because we've only got really two weeks to see any sort of uh, changes. Um, Earth and Moon, again, very slow acting. Um, any of the chemical reaction ones that we've looked at have had health and safety issues. So we do tend to lean towards um, energy conservation, the forces, um, and water. So they seem to be the, the ones that lend themselves to the best investigations uh, and experiments. What we also have to remember is with any of these experiments, uh, you have to supply the equipment. So, you know, that's why the water ones are, 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 are quite helpful. Um, forces, we're talking about magnetism, electricity, could be gravitational forces, any of those forces. And then energy cons conservation um, is another one that lends itself well to, um, to equipment that we can easily get our hands on. Um, a good food experiment as well um, can also lend itself to, to a good experiment. Okay, so you need to start thinking about that over the midterm about which area you're going to look into regarding your investigation. Okay, it's going to be important also to see how the experiment is going to be marked. So the first thing that we're looking at when we're marking this is have you formed a testable hypothesis? Okay, and we'll go into exactly what a hypothesis is, uh, just to refresh our memories. Uh, the also, it's going to be important to mention in your report that you've looked at the reliability and fairness of your test. Okay, and how we do that, we'll go um, through it a little bit later. Um, appropriate safety considerations. Okay, so that's really important. So when you're looking at your experiment, did you understand any safety considerations that need to be taken and was it carried out safely, which is hugely important. And then as we, as we kind of carry out the experiment, uh, did you accurately collect and record good quality? Was it reliable? Um, and could it be easily repeated? So that's all about taking good measurements, reliable measurements, and then recording them and having evidence that you have recorded them. And to score well in this, you have to show that you've used an innovative approach that truly enhances the work, okay? So really looking for something different, something novel, and that's the score exceptional, okay? Um, that you're recording a sufficient amount of good quality data and we'll have bars and graphs and tables in the next section to show you what the expectation is regards the amount of quality uh, data that needs to be recorded. Again, it's important to, to show that you are carrying out the, the experiment with all the relevant calculations and, and representations and how you're going to show this. So that could be through graphs, it could be through diagrams, it could be through, through anything. And very important is understanding the relationship between the variables. Okay, and we'll give some examples of experiments that were done um, and the variables that were used and the relationship between the two. So it's going to be really important part of, um, of the CBA1, understanding what variables are and how they can change and how they can have an effect on the overall uh, results. So the last part of the marking scheme is this bit here, and really brings us back to the, to the testable hypothesis. So based on your experiments, 
um, were you able to provide a justified conclusion supported by the data okay and then if there was some anomalous or, 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 or information that didn't really make sense were you able to justify it was there a, a problem with your experimental method so this can happen when you're carrying out experiments that you might get some, some, some numbers that don't really make sense and where you're able to explain these um, the next part is, is quite self-explanatory you'll also need to mention maybe strengths and weaknesses of the investigation um, so you know not all experiments considering you're only three weeks they're going to have some obvious weaknesses in them things that you'd need to develop and work on if you were to go further with this um, experiment and then the strengths of it what why you think it is a good experiment um, and then mentioning refinements and that just means things that you change to make it better to to refine it explain fully um, why no improvements could be reasonably achieved okay so that's a fair enough point uh, considering that it's only three weeks okay so there are huge limitations with any experiment but it's going to be important to mention these um, if you want to collect as many marks as possible okay so this is the part uh, we try and find out what your question is going to be what is your topic of investigation so what we'll try and do is tease out what a good question is uh, and what's not uh, an extended experimental investigation report so looking at those ti titles you might look at things like um, around the moon so um, how far away is the moon that's a scientific question okay so that'll be question one um, question two um, how much durable that means long lasting are different plastics okay and maybe a third question could be um, which chemical reaction produces a greatest force Okay, so there are just three examples of, uh, of possible scientific questions. But only one of them will be possible in our criteria for the EEI, for the Extended Experimental Investigation. And we'll discover which one that is now. Okay, so using this template here, um, we can figure out which of those questions will lend itself to the EEI. So the first one was, how far away is the moon? So, how far away is moon? Okay, so let's start here. Does the science behind your question relate to the topic? Yeah, it was one of the topics, Earth and Space. So that's a tick. Can your question be investigated using the materials available to you? Yeah, well... It could be quite limiting because it is a classroom based assessment um, you know there would be ways to, to do that yeah you could figure out with the right equipment can your question be investigated in your time available to you um, yeah I think you could does your question contain opinions so this is where we could start getting into problems with this question so does it contain opinions so if you want to work out how far away the moon is um, the issue with that is that, that it's pretty well documented using very scientific data exactly how far away the moon actually is. Okay, so, so does your question allow you to identify variables, things that could be measured or observed? And see, there we're starting to get into problems there, things that could be observed. So this doesn't really lend itself to a good EEI going by our criteria. So can't really pick out those variables you'd literally get your measuring tool measure it and that would be it within the time frame that we have 
So the next question that we had was um, how durable, so how durable are different plastics? Okay, it's very topical. Um, plastics are a real issue at the moment and they don't decompose as, as, as quickly as other natural materials. So let's see if this is something that we could do in our EEI. So yeah, it does, it's a question on plastics. Uh, can your question be investigated using the material? Yes, you could get your hands on lots of different um, plastics. Can your question be investigated in the time available to you? So this will be the problem with this one here is it takes thousands of years for plastics to degrade and break down. So we're not going to have the time to, 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 to look into that. Um, it is an area of research, an active area of research, where we're getting different materials and trying to get them to, to decompose and break down so they're not harming the environment. So, so this goes to here. Okay, so it can't be investigated in the time that we have available. So another uh, false start. So we get to go back to the drawing board. Okay, so the last question that we had was um, chemical reactions and the force produced. So um, do different chemical reactions produce different forces? Okay, so let's look at that. So what was specifically that we're looking at in this example was an experiment was done by one of the students and it was Alka-Seltzer in water in a capsule. And he shook it and it burst and gave off a, a big explosion. Um, and one of the other guys got the idea of looking into maybe using that force to propel a bottle. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we can show you a video of that. So, does the science behind your... Yeah, it does, because it's water, it's chemical reactions, it's forces. So, absolutely, it relates to our topic. Can your question be investigated? Use, yeah, all you need is Alka-Seltzer, water, and a bottle. So, we can do that. Can your question be investigated in the time available? Absolutely. Two hours. Does your question contain opinions? Yeah, because he's going to change... The chemical reaction okay so he's going to change the chemical reaction he's going to add more alka-seltzer so maybe two tablets three tablets four tablets um, another variable that he was looking to change was uh, the, the temperature of the water so if you're creating this chemical reaction do you get more force upward thrust or force with hot water or cold water Okay, so, so these are variables that he could change. So absolutely. Um, so amount of tablets. It's your Alka-Seltzer. So there's little headache tablets. And then temperature of water. Okay, so there are two variables that he's going to change. Can investigating your question help you understand how and why something happens? Absolutely, yeah. You get a better idea of chemical reactions and what speeds them up or slows them down. Um, great, you have a question to investigate. So you have to go through those steps in order to get a very successful um, experimental topic. Okay, so at this website here, we can have a look at some examples of students' work and what they got. So above expectations, in line with expectations, so that's all related to the features of quality. So let's try and click on one of these, um, say above expectations and lactic acid. So we'll see if we can. Okay, so when we're looking at this example of an experiment and how it's written up, we can see from the marking scheme what they're looking for. So they wanna be able to see evidence that you have a testable hypothesis and it's stated there. So you're gonna get marked for that. If it's a testable hypothesis, um, the other thing that you're going to need to talk about will be, you know, the limitations of the actual experiment. And they're clearly stated there. Other points, and we can go through this step by step, is that it's very, there's a very clear method. OK, and it's numbered one through four. Um, you'll also need to mention, you know, why you actually picked the particular topic that you picked and, and, and the inspiration here or the reasons of your back ground research and um, other points that it's clearly 
uh, describing the, the, the data that's been collected. Um, some diagrams here to help explain the method. Uh, more examples of data being collected. Um, it's got a list of the research uh, very clearly stated there. Uh, and it's got a conclusion. So all the things that we talked about in our features of quality are mentioned here. Okay, so what we might do is look at one more example of um, an experiment and how it was marked. Okay, in this uh, CBA1, CBA1, um, they've presented it a little bit differently, okay? It, it's still well presented, it's above expectations, it's got a very clear introduction, um, it's got its hypothesis, some background information, and then some considerations. So when we look at the features of quality, the student does propose um, the hypothesis and it's testable. In this specific one, it's talking about UV bead experiment. That's ultraviolet. So the effect ultraviolet light has on these beads. And again, it'll become more clear as we go through the actual experiment. Uh, it talks about the equipment that's required. It's very clear, it's gonna be repeatable. So again, looking at our features of quality, displays evidence that considerations have been made related to reliability and fairness. And they're clearly stated there for anyone that wants to you know, do this experiment themselves. The next area here would be the method and the equipment are identified. So we've got a very clear diagram here showing the UV torch and the UV bead and a plastic case and a stand. So that's all getting marked making sure that it's clearly labeled. Um, set up, so what number set up uh, procedure allows for a collection of qu good quality data. And that's what this experiment's all about, is collecting data. So if you were to go into this a little bit more detail, it would show you exactly how it collected the data from the UV onto the bead. And you can see there a, a stopwatch is being used to see how long it takes for the actual UV bead to change color. And it's clearly stated there um, what color it will go to and how long it took. So these measurements again are mentioned here. So we can see how it's marked in relation to the features of quality. The variables are being changed and the method is outlined. Um, and it's actually lost marks here because it may not be easily repeated by others. So according to the marking scheme, it's not clearly labeled. And that's probably why it was not scoring high in the exceptional bracket of the features of quality. Again, just more documentation of the UV chart that was used to help with understanding. Again, the results are clearly labeled here. Um, you can print these out or use a bar chart to make it a little bit easier. Um, I have enclosed in your Edmodo account uh, a template to help with the reproduction of, of different results that you'll need. But this is an example of the amount of data that you'll have to collect in order for it to be marked well. Again, clearly labeled here with more bar charts. Um, outline safety considerations. This is something that's really important. No matter what experiment you're doing, you need to mention that there were safety considerations, be it you know, wearing your safety goggles, be it wearing a lab coat, whatever, whatever it may be, but you need to state these, otherwise you will get marked down. Um, and then be honest at the end, what went wrong? What could you learn? It talks about refinements as well. What refinements, what could you do to improve? Um, what problems did you come across? Um, again, more results. This here is, yes, we have all the results recorded, but um, and graphed results. So what, they have to be displayed, and then they're displayed in this um, colorful bar chart. And then finally, a conclusion. And we can see here, it draws a conclusion consistent with data. Um, there is some confusion how it is expressed. So it's not fully clear. Um, the conclusion of how it links in with the with the overall experiment, but that gives a good idea of the standard that's required um, to reach in line with expectations. So here's an example of a, a report that you could use if you wanted. 
Um, it's fairly straightforward what your question is. Remember, go back to that chart about is it a height, does, is it testable? Remember the thing with the five and six questions and then you, you had a good science question. The reason that you're interested, what your hypothesis is, um, what measurements you're going to make, um, what factors you'll change. This is all to do with your variables and what factors you'll keep the same. Um, where did you hear about this project? So it's just getting a bit of an insight into you know, whereabouts you came across. Maybe it was a conversation, maybe it was a magazine, maybe it was a website. Very clearly the equipment that you're going to need. So if somebody did want to reproduce your experiment, they could. Risk analysis. So this is really um, where the safety precautions need to kick in. Um, outlining your, your risk, outlining your method, space for a diagram. Um, continued there for diagrams and your method, your results to go into, um, your, your results being graphed, um, results explained, and then your conclusions, comments, observations. So it's all fairly self-explanatory, but if you just, you can just use this template to help you and linking in with the features of quality, making sure that you have all those areas checked. Um, and then finally your reflection, and it goes through their points A to G. Um, and then signed and your finished date. So just remember in those dates. So when we get back from the midterm and then two weeks in March. So three weeks in total. Um, extra space if needed. And then that final section here. Whether it's exceptional or above expectations. Okay. And really what you've got to do is you've got to refer back to the features of quality. Which are, are mentioned at the very start of this video. Thank you and best of luck with your CBA one. If you have any questions, you can just ask them on Edmodo, um, so best of luck.